Hello folks, welcome. If you're new around here, my name is Kweku and I am a pharmacist. On this channel, I do medication reviews and talk about interesting healthcare topics. If this is something you find interesting, please consider subscribing and I'll be more than honored to have you as a subscriber. Today we'll be reviewing the medication Clopidogrel, which is also marketed under the brand name Plavix. We'll take a look at the description and uses. We will look at the dosing, some side effects, as well as some common drug interactions that you should be aware of. And all these topics, I'm going to have links to them in the description, such that if it is only one area, say you're interested in just the side effects, there'll be a link in the description. You just click on that timestamp and it will take you directly to the side effects or whatever you want to watch. So feel free to move around as you please. Just a little disclaimer though, that this review is just for informational purposes and is not intended to be a substitute for medical advice from your physician. So Clopidogrel or Plavix, as it is known by its brand name, is a medication that is used to prevent thrombosis or for the prophylaxis of thrombosis. Now thrombosis simply means the formation of a blood clot. There are certain people who are at a relatively higher risk of developing blood clots and such people benefit from Clopidogrel. Such people include people who've had a, a recent heart attack or a myocardial infarction, people who've had a cerebral vascular accident or a stroke, or any other vascular incidents for that matter. Or some people may have some irregular heartbeats which kind of increases their risks of developing blood clots. So clopidogrel is referred to as a platelet inhibitor, meaning that it prevents your platelets from aggregating together. Now platelet aggregation is the means by which blood clots are formed. So if you're able to prevent this process, then the people that I mentioned earlier who are at a relatively high risk of developing such blood clots, they get protection or they are protected. The maintenance dose for clopidogrel is typically 75 milligrams taken daily. However, it is not unusual to see what is called a loading dose where you're giving a relatively high dose, sometimes 300 milligrams or 600 milligrams of clopidogrel once. This usually brings the level of clopidogrel in the blood to an appreciable level and then maintenance dose is continued from there. With respect to side effects, clopidogrel is generally well tolerated. A lot of people take it without any issues or without any serious side effects. Some common side effects include bruising, diarrhea, stomach pain, and even constipation has been reported in some instances. These generally tend to go away. They are not the serious ones. The more serious side effects of clopidogrel have to do with uh, bleeding either in the gut, in the eyes, or in the brain. Now, this type of bleeding tends to be relatively rare, but it is serious. And therefore, if you notice any of the following symptoms, it will be definitely be a good idea to reach out to your doctor right away. A bloody or black, tarry stools, red or dark brown urine, spitting up blood or brown material that looks like coffee grounds, red spots on the skin, unusual bruising or bleeding from the eyes, the gums or the nose. Now, these are generally indicative of no, it's a serious problem that needs to be taken care of right away. So like I said earlier, please do seek medical attention if you notice any of these. Now with respect to drug interactions, there are certain medications that reduce the efficacy or the antiplatelet activity of clopidogrel. A typical example is calcium channel blockers like amlodipine and proton pump inhibitors uh, like omeprazole, which is used for acid reflux. What happens is that clopidogrel is converted into what is called an active metabolite in the body for it to be active. And this depends on certain enzymes. What some of these do, like omeprazole, inhibits the enzyme that com converts clopidogrel into its active metabolite. And therefore, in the presence of omeprazole, there's a very high chance that clopidogrel may not be as effective as it was intended. So definitely let your doctor know if you're taking any of these medications so appropriate measures can be taken. There are also the other set of medications that actually increase the risk of bleeding. So obviously a medication like warfarin or coumadin will be top on that list. If you're ever taking them concurrently, your risks of bleeding increases significantly. Also NSAIDs like ibuprofen, naproxen, they all increase the risk of bleeding. So it would definitely be a good idea to let your doctor know. Now clopidogrel may be given with aspirin in certain instances. While this is would solely depend on your individual conditions, just bear in mind that that combination may increase your risks for bleeding and therefore you definitely take all the necessary precautions and be on the lookout for any signs of bleeding, especially internal bleeding, the ones that we discussed earlier. Another class of medications that when used concurrently with clopidogrel 
increases your risks of bleeding include setting antidepressant medications, the classes, the SNRIs, and the SSRIs. Now, these include things like duloxetine or Cymbalta, venlafaxine or Effexa, Zoloft or Cetraline, Paxil or Paroxetine, and a few others. So with these as well, just be on the lookout for any signs of bleeding and report it to your doctor immediately. I thank you for watching. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already subscribed, please consider doing so. Thank you so very much and catch you on the next one.